Alrighty, good afternoon everyone, my name is Leonard Garcia, and today we are going to be talking about um, social and political commentary within games, and for this particular discussion we are going to be looking at a game known as Darfur is Dying, which is developed by a couple of students uh, by the University of uh, Southern California. We are going to be watching a Let's Play created by this user right here, I believe it's Korean. Um, and let's go ahead and get started and we'll talk a little bit about this game and get into our discussion. So the game begins by selecting one of one of eight family members. Um, and the purpose of Darfur is dying is to gather is to select a family member to go out and retrieve water for your village or sorry for your um, for your camp. And then once you return for camp, um, given that you successfully retrieve the water, um, you're tasked with managing um, your refugee camp um, in, in the midst of this uh, crisis, this humanitarian crisis taking place in Sudan, um, uh, the Sudanese border region between Sudan and Chad known as Darfur. So the player makes a decision of which one of the four family members will be tasked with going to go get water. Now each member has different stats and different abilities that make them um, better or worse at retrieving water. Uh, children in this game can hide in smaller objects, or can hide behind smaller um, foliage and terrain. Whereas adults, sorry that was a, that was a little scary. So uh, adults can't really hide between that much uh, foliage, but they can carry more water on the way back. Um, I'm sorry from these pauses. I'm just it, it's very it's it's it very intense. So um, when this happens, so essentially the um, Sudanese militia forces and Sudanese central government forces. Um, have been committing gross human rights violations of the Darfurian people um, and this is what happens when you play as a young girl or as any female within Darfur um, Darfur is dying you get this message letting you know that girls um, are typically kidnapped and abused um, by these militia groups so now that you've unfortunately now that you've lost a member of your family now you can no longer use that member to forage for water um, you have to unfortunately use another member. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about the commentary behind this game. So Darfur is dying. Uh, Darfur is dying is clearly a game that is meant to shed light on the Darfurian genocide. A lot of people call it the Darfurian humanitarian crisis, um, and it's very much uh, you know on the scale of 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 a of a genocide of a cultural genocide of people. Um, simply for not wanting or simply for being different and uh, having uh, opposing beliefs to the Sudanese central government and militia forces. Um, the game shows how important and how um, just how tragic the life within Darfur is to go out of these refugee camps to go get water. Now you may say to yourself, well why aren't there security forces like UN peacekeepers or anything? around in this game um, and the issue is that the Sudanese government has forced UN um, UN peacekeepers out of this region of the world um, and no longer allows them there so really the Darfurian people are just really on their own um, to you know to get by and to um, live their lives the Darfurian camps are constantly raided by Sudanese militias um, and they're constantly being put behind politically and being targeted uh, for their cultural heritage. And this game just shows a pretty good example of just what life is like. Um, I'll fast forward to where you um, to another part of the second core part of the game, which is managing the camps. Um, so life in Darfur unfortunately is not like life like we imagine it. A lot of these people are refugees that have been displaced due to political violence and just violence in general, and they oftentimes live inside these um, 
these loosely put together communities known as uh, camps, typically UN peace camps, um, that used to have security forces, but uh, as we spoke about before, no longer do. And and for a lot of these people, a lot of Darfurians, these camps are not places that uh, that really feel like home. They feel like just a place that gives them a momentary, you know, moment of of security. But it, it is not a place where, um, you know, they have lived there for generations. These are refugees, and they unfortunately do not have the, uh, you know, a, an area of, of, of the world that they can call home um, thanks to this uh, humanitarian crisis. So um, throughout the game, you'll notice that you are tending to different, um, different parts of your village. Um, there's a threat meter that is, it seems to always be on this red high level. Um, and if we could fast forward, you, you might be able to see the, the moments of ambush. So you get this message letting you know that there's an imminent attack. And, um, if you fast forward here, you can see that the camp's health has deteriorated. Uh, there's a little bit less things going on now. And that's because... Life constantly in Darfur and in these Darfurian camps are, are, are always being put behind. It, it's hard for people to get a foothold, and I and that's definitely what this game wants to showcase. It's not a game that you play because you there's you know there's an objective, there's a way to lift these Darfurian people out of um, out of this crisis. It's just it's just the reality that they live with, and it's uh, simply showcasing that. Well, I hope that this was an insightful talk, and I hope we. Um, learned a little bit about just political and cultural commentary within video games and how important the mechanics in those games um, and how those mechanics in those games relate to political commentary or social commentary and yeah i hope we can talk a little bit more about this in the comments and thank you for watching have a wonderful afternoon Bye bye